Welcome, Anderson, to Anderson TV's episode of What's Up, Downtown A-Town. And this is a show where we talk about all of the wonderful things that are happening right downtown in downtown Anderson that you might not know about that you need to know about. Today, we're here with Shane Bivens and Lindsay Barton from Vesuvius. And so we're going to have a conversation with them about what they've been up to lately. Shane, why don't you introduce to the folks what Vesuvius actually is? So it's in, when I first came back into town, so I was gone for about 20 years. I'm a graduate of Highland, so I can get my street cred out there, right? <laughs> so I graduated from Highland in 96. Lindsay's also 97, That's right? That's right. So uh, both of us kind of like deserted the town right after high school, mm -hmm. and everything was fine for the most part. When we left, everything was good. And uh, I think both of us have basically just come back during the times when there's like holidays and things to visit our sure. families. Because um, their families have always been here. Um, but went around, done a lot of things in life and been involved in a lot of things, different startups, different businesses, different types of industries, all types of like uh, experiences that uh, when I came back into town and came back to Indiana and said, hey, could we try to do something here? I saw that there was that I wasn't alone, that there was a lot of people who have are coming back and bringing their experiences with them and trying to find a way to kind of capture them again, as well as the people that are here. There is absolutely amazing people in Anderson that, you know, I've lived in Princeton, New Jersey, which is like the, the genius capital of the world. You know, you have like Einstein created a facility there for, right. for geniuses, <laughs> you know, and I met some amazing people and coming back here, I thought I was going to, you know, be back into the mentality that I, that I expected, you know, of being back in, you know, the Rust Belt or all these other things. But then as soon as I sat down and started talking to people again, just amazed. I mean, people like Pete Batar and Tony Severin and uh, these, there's just so many entrepreneurs, so many innovators and so many people that are extremely passionate about Anderson and about this area and this region that really made me feel more confident to say, okay, well, I, I want to try to figure out how to move some of my businesses here and grow businesses here. Um, but what I saw is like the big missing piece was that a lot of these people were there and they existed, but they didn't really have like a way to find each other and communicate. Your experience from, from coming back in and so looking at it from big picture, you saw yeah. all of this genius all over the place and nobody's talking. There was no, there was no collision for them. You know, like they, they may have known of each other, but right. it didn't seem like those people were like real. Right. Like there, there's and I grew up here and knew that there was like, a, you know, I, I had a, a mentality of that things are very hard. You know, going to college right. would be very hard as the first of my family and extended family to go to college right. um, and the first to start a business. You know, but since then, my other family members have started businesses and gone to college, you know, but it's like kind of someone has to be that first one. Right. But like that, uh, that, uh, well. A continual evolution of like that there's people out there that are doing things and right now if I'm here I feel like I need to go to Noblesville Fishers or Indianapolis right. in order to connect with other like intellectually curious people when they're everywhere here and there's all kinds of events that already support them and all kinds of services that already support them and a, a lot of people just don't know that they're there or they find out about them after they occur so what Vesuvius' main goal is, is to really act as like that, that collision point in whatever form that would be, you know, whether that is our space, which is the Vesuvius co-working space, or whether that are events such as like, uh, we have the pitch night, we had our first one uh, just in January, uh, and then we'll have another one coming up on July 11th. And tickets are on sale now for that on Vesuvius.in. And uh, uh, so the, we, we're trying to curate through those things, and we're also curating people because we're really trying to find out what are the things that interest people and what are the unique skills they have and trying to find right points in time to connect those people together. Give us a little bit of the backstory on the name Vesuvius itself. Back around the 1890s, uh, two guys go down by the river. Gas had been discovered in other parts of the state and mainly in this region, and they dug a well into the river, 
found natural gas. As soon as they found it, it was, okay, cool, everybody else has it. What do we do to let people know we, that this exists? So what they did was they piped it right up against the river, and they lit a massive fire that was on certain nights. You could see it in Indianapolis. Wow. And it was just well, I didn't know that piece. Big, you could see it in Indy. That's a yeah, big fire. Yeah, it's like lighting the sky. And it was, it was such an attraction that it was written about from coast to coast. I mean, you can find articles about it in San Francisco and in New York City about this massive gas well that was discovered. And they took the train station, you know, from the one we currently know now, they took that, uh, they took and moved one uh, right next to it. So you could basically take a train excursion right up to the to Vesuvius and you know get right there in the heat of it and and see that happen. Sure. But what that did is you know yeah it was an amazing waste of gas and it was an amazing waste of of, <laughs> of resources. But what it did was it uh, like an example would be like the Remy brothers. The Remy sure. brothers you know, they're two guys in a shack down That's where right. Dickman Town Center is right. No economic development team today would be like racing and chasing after two guys in a shack right now. Right. But at that time, it was, hey, you guys have something, you know, the Magneto, the later very similar to an alternator type thing. Uh, you guys have this. Like, what if we gave you manufacturing facilities? Like, we have this endless gas supply was the thought at the time. Mm -hmm. What if we helped you build an industrial facility so you could grow this business? And there was only like a thousand people in the town at that time. You know, this was Anderson Town. It wasn't really right. what it is today by any stretch of the imagination. But what by doing that and, and fostering those two individuals as just one example of the multitude of one ones that came out during that era, then you had the two Remy brothers doing really innovative things. They were the first people in the entire nation to do something called an innovation award grant. And what it was is as an employee, if I found something that would improve the bottom line and could save the company money, I would get a percentage of that for X amount of years. The first year they did that, they gave away $300,000 in 1890s money. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so you have millionaires being created overnight. The, today's right. money, you're talking, uh, I think I calculated it into like 30 or $40 million, if not wow. more. The, all of a sudden, people are, you know, a lot of them are orphans. A lot of people that were here were like disjointed and weren't really like tied into the community at the time. But all of a sudden, they were given wealth. And all of a sudden, you have these massive explosions of where people are building buildings and things are going very, very rapidly. Houses are coming very quickly online. And we just very quickly grew from that natural gas line. And mm -hmm. today we can reproduce that same thing with our amazing fiber network that no one said. That's right. In the 1890s, it was the train that brought all the people here. And, and now in the 2010s you know, and 20s, we can actually do that same thing with the fiber network that we already have completely In encapsulating place. the city. That's right. And those are very valuable things that other communities are struggling to build. Right. You know, Fishers, Indiana is building a, a downtown that looks a lot like our downtown. West Clay has this artificial downtown because so many people want that. They want that feel again of that, mm -hmm. you know, early 19th century buildings and landscape and that density that we created during that time. They want that, but they want it in it with the new way that people do business, which is distant, you know, and things need to move very rapidly. A lot of things are automated. A lot of things involve logistics and more so than actual manual labor putting things together. And Anderson is extremely well poised to be that spot. Right. I mean, there's, there's other towns that would be just completely envious if they even knew we had the fiber network that we have. You know, I, Anderson residents don't know. Residents They're, and externally, yeah. you know, yes. like right. even if you go as you go as far down the street as Muncie, they don't know. You go as far down the street as Chicago, they definitely don't know. But they all are trying to find some way to reproduce this. And Fishers right now is, is really promoting this idea that they have this fiber network and they have this gig network that's out there. Ours could easily be faster than that, and it, it is, and it could easily be much, it's, it's already much bigger and, and what it could serve and who it could serve. And, uh, and Fishers right now has basically one pipeline that they're just, they're, they're going to like continue to market that and right. get all kinds of, of uh, exposure because of that. When we already have it, we could really be exploiting that. You came back, noticed all the, the pieces of the puzzle, and then you have been working since then with Vesuvius to bring the puzzle together and bring people together. Yeah. 
So talk a little bit about that. I know you, you mentioned the co-working space, the pitch nights. Tell us more about those events. With uh, the co-working space, the general I there, ideal there is a part of that place and people curation process. So we, we know this is a long-term thing. You know, I, I'm basically mm-hmm. following. I'm not. None of this is like something I invented. This whole idea of co-working or curating people or anything that's that's being done. I'm basically following a roadmap on a book written by by uh, Brad Feld called Startup Communities. And he wrote something called the Boulder Thesis, which was how Boulder became kind of this, the next Silicon Valley for mm, the past mm-hmm. 20 years. It's become like this mecca for venture capital and people really getting interested in business and entrepreneurism. Boulder was a forgotten place 20 years ago. Right. And now Boulder's like one of the hottest places to buy a home and start a business. There's yeah, just so much are, resources. People are just flocking out there. Yeah, it's unbelievable to me. Yeah, and and Boulder's not wholly un, uh, like unique. There's nothing really unique there, other than a group of entrepreneurs and a group of innovators getting together and saying, "Hey, let's see if we really try to put all our efforts in here. What happens? You know, let's really get involved, and you know, whether that's civically or or getting involved and you know, just uh, uh, cultivating each other's projects and and raising awareness sure. of what's happening. You know, the way that they got involved and the way that they built out their their uh, their ecosystem has been very attractive to me. And a lot of other communities have been able to do the same thing. And you know, one of the things I did very early on when coming back to Anderson was, and thinking about how do you do this, is I went and visited very similar communities like mm-hmm. LaCroix, Wisconsin. LaCroix, Wisconsin has about 50,000 residents. Mm-hmm. It's on a river. They used to have a lot of businesses in the textile uh, industry. A lot of manufacturing went on there. About 25 years ago, the textile industry completely deserted them. They have a small college of about 2,000 people there. And about five years ago, they opened up a co-working space with help of the city and with the, with the state. And then they also uh, uh, really started building up the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Where you go into LaCroix or Wisconsin, when you go through it, other than they've really captured their riverfront much more uh-huh. effectively than we have. Uh-huh. But other than that, if you when you're in that city, you feel like you're in Anderson, but where we're going to be in like 10 to 20 years easily. So what does that look like? Uh, you see that uh, all the shops on the first floor are all occupied. There's all occupied space, and there's all, a lot of unique local things. You do have the chains, you have those things that are still sure. there too. They're always gonna gravitate and you know, always welcome. Uh, but you do have a lot of smaller shops opening, a lot of people trying things, a lot of people trying really unique and different things. And then you just have this, like, this mentality of where you know there's certain places you can go into town and find the communication or the, the have the conversation that you want to have. You know, whether okay. if you want to talk about business, you know, there's three different places you can go in town and, and have those co- those conversations. Or if you want to talk about sports, you know, there's that place where you can go and have that conversation. And Anderson, you know, especially with like, you know, the Oakley Brothers and Creatures of Habit and Kettle Top. And, right. and you can just keep on going. And then the existing things like Kroger Heads and things that have been here for a while, you know, they're they already have kind of their own little niche of things that they're doing. And they with, do. Yeah. Yeah. Each one of them has their own little unique feel yes. and and you feel this like amazing energy that just two and a half years ago I, I didn't feel as strong as I do now now Agreed. I totally agree yeah yeah it's just this energy that we have right now is amazing you know and there'll always be people that are like you know doubters you know if one thing I've learned in life is whenever you do something cool there's somebody out there that hates you because of it <laughs> you know yeah. it's you're always gonna have I think doubters it wasn't their idea <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But you're always going to have that. You know, I've, I, you can go to the most beautiful places in the world and there's somebody in that town that hates it, you know, and, and Anderson ha- is, is susceptible to that just like any other place and Midwesterners are, you know, and, and we're also very, one of the other like huger conditions is that we're, we're very nice and we never tell people things are stupid or things that don't work or things that are, that's a bad idea. We go, oh, that sounds interesting or that sounds cool. Yeah, you should do that. You know, uh, whereas, uh, you know, on the East Coast or, or West Coast, you do something that's weird that's not really going to work. People will let you know <laughs> right away, you know, so that, that we need to kind of open ourselves up to one thinking outside of Anderson, thinking about when people do show up, like really care, like grasping them. Yeah, but then we also need to really think about uh, uh, how do we really uh, help 
help define our area. We can all decide what it's going to be. We can really push it in any direction we want. There's a lot of empty buildings that are just ready and ripe to just go whatever direction we want to take this town, this whole city. When people doubt you, you have to just turn that off. You have to just uh, not listen to any of that kind of uh, the tapes that roll in your head and just press forward. And what you're saying is, hey, let's let's get all those entrepreneurs together and get them a space where they can support each other and, yeah. and be able to grow from that space. And find that community that suits them. You know? right. like entrepreneurs and people that are around entrepreneurs. So when, I, when you say entrepreneurs, there's, those are like one in a thousand, right? But the people that are around it, there's a lot of people. More than 70% of Indiana works for an entrepreneur. And it's, I think Anderson is full of entrepreneurs. It's I think packed. It, Yes, I think it's, yeah. there's something so special about this place um, that, that I just cannot shake. Uh, you know, the, and I think that sometimes we kind of have that, I call it the Anderson self-esteem problem. Yeah. But I think even that people are starting to go, oh, wait a minute. There's there's some stuff happening here. And so that's exciting. And part of your um, job that you have been doing is doing these pitch nights, which I find fascinating. So you're getting ready to do your second and your first one was an absolute success. And so talk a little bit about that and talk about the company that's come out of that, that has rented a building uh, and, and are getting ready to open. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Lindsay's very well informed of this as well, too. So. Yeah, there's some amazing women that are opening a space downtown, um, Ariel Fit to Fly. They're awesome. They do um, bungee fitness and aerial silk work. They're going to offer some other unique classes. Um, and it's fitness for everyone. So, you know, if you're injured, if you're not, you know, in a condition that you feel like you can work out or, you know, do something like that, you can. Um, it's for those types of people and because it's for it's everyone. Because it's low impact, right? Yeah, it's, it's my very low impact. That you're on a bungee. Mm -hmm. And so it's the the impact is very low. So yeah. if you are injured, like you said, that's, that's the perfect place for you to go for exercise. Right. And they, these ladies have just been really working so hard to be open. Um, I think it's June 22nd. Is that correct? June 22nd is their target date. But June 2nd, they're going to start allowing people to uh, to reserve and start purchasing time so that they'll be able to, to be there. So when the brew fest is going on downtown, oh, sure. yeah. you'll Perfect be able to timing. walk by and kind of see what's happening in yes. there. And um, so their building is what, for Anderson folks, is what used to be the old fr Frisch's, just catty corner from the courthouse. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's yeah. an exciting place, too, because you're going to get so much traffic going by there. I mean, it's a great location. They couldn't have picked a better spot. Yeah, it's the top of the strip, right? I mean, it's right. the top of Absolutely. the strip. So it's a perfect location and a good introduction to people that come into the community. They're going to, when they go down Meridian Street, that beautiful brick-lined road, they're going to go right past Aerial Fit, and they're going to go right past the other ventures that we've talked about. Tell the Anderson folks what pitch night looks like. What is that? Basically, like an amalgamation of amalgamation of everything that I've like experienced in my own entrepreneurial ventures and other things, where I've been to things that were more focused around art, or things that are more focused around like entrepreneurism or innovation, sure. and a lot of them are just they're really different. You know, there's like that Shark Tank type thing, which is right. very intense, and then there's the the art side of things where they where it's much more open and free, and we're kind of in the middle between those two. So ultimately, what the night looks like itself is. It, each person gets up on stage and they're given 20 slides to auto progress every 20 seconds. And what that allows the person who's presenting to do is not be concerned about trying to stay on their slides mm -hmm. as well as it keeps the interest of the audience. Because the audience we have isn't you know, always going to be the people that just want to learn about the financial outcome of, of business. You know, they might be looking at, does this impact me? Is this something I just find interesting? You know, there's multiple different types of people that come to, to an event like this and uh, came to the first one. So they, you get those 20 slides, 20 seconds. So that's almost seven minutes of time. As soon as that 20, 20th slide ends, the 21st slide is an applause slide. The, the job of the next person is to get up there and get the mic out of that person hands and everybody was very cordial during the first one which was fantastic you know <laughs> no one was pushing each other each other down or anything uh, so they they exchanged really quickly and it, it, it was a, a really great kind of like a storytelling thing like people really told their stories and really they engaged the audience into why they're doing what they're doing and their passion behind it and 
with the way the after all the pitches went and after everybody was done, then the audience actually voted and determined who was going to be awarded the best pitch of the night. So they all voted on Facebook Live. They had to attach their face and their name to their vote. So they had to get that community involvement to say, I am behind this. Right? So they they do all the voting in, in there and the audience as well as people anywhere that you know were aware of the event or were watching it online or anywhere else they were able to vote as well so it really engaged the community and put people's names and faces to companies and to organizations uh, and then at the end of that we awarded a check for seventy six hundred dollars and some change to uh, Aerial Fit, and that was the result of basically almost all of the sponsorship dollars, the ticket mm-hmm. sales, and anything else that people contributed. Uh, they had quite a few sponsors, like Indiana Economic Development Corporation, fantastic right. sponsor, Elevate Ventures out of Indianapolis, like just amazing for our first time doing something, and you know, Anderson, Indiana, the Elevate Ventures, uh, the larger f- venture firms in the state jumped on board of that. Yeah, would take notice. Oh, yeah. And- and jump on board. Sure. And we had people that were just donating, like, resources, effort, help. I mean, there was 40 people that were on the team just to get the night best prepared for the people that were pitching. Mm. You know, Lindsay was on that team, and, you know, Kevin Huff and Kim Rogers Hatfield and, and Jeff and uh, 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 Jeff Ginther and new people to town, people that have been here for a long time, and it just... We had a big team of people that were really pushing for this to be successful. And it ended up, you know, I, I was not expecting to fill the house and we filled the house. You know, I, I was expecting just to kind of get that middle section of the main right. stage theater. And, and we, I love that you had it there. It I, I love that you, yeah, you pulled in main stage as well. What a great theater. Yeah, it was perfect. And then the history of that the building was Corey Sharp, you know, as is one of his uh, great great grandfather, I believe, like built that building and started his first companies out of there and was a massive innovator for the region. And Corey was one of the people that got to present to Ariel Fit the award. And we also gave awards to other people that didn't necessarily get the, you know, the maximal award, but we gave other awards. We gave things from uh, startup ladies. Um, uh, we had Kristen Cooper with Startup Ladies, which is uh, 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 kind of becoming a national th- a membership base that uh, helps women start up businesses and helps them grow their businesses. Two of the people that pitched, two of the women, are now connected into this amazing network of right. other entrepreneurs and other business women that are really pushing for things. And the media that came off of that was amazing. I mean, uh, because of that uh, Startup Ladies thing, we were like featured in Working Women's Magazine and work, Working Women's Video, like on their, their regular uh, kind of a, a video podcast that they do. And it was all around Aerial Fit and just getting all this energy behind Aerial fit and that's kind of been you know Lindsay and I's big effort is you know one uh, making sure that uh, if aerial fit were not to uh, open or have some other problem that it was not because of the community not supporting them sure that we were all there you know, right. you know we, we want to make sure that that's successful and all those people that were voted for her and voted for for Lindsay and charity for those two ladies they're all now liking them on Facebook and following them and hitting them on everything they post up there. There's so much fast-paced likes, shares, and other stuff going on around the stuff they're doing. It's an amazing amount of energy, and we hope we can reproduce that this next time. But getting to that stage is the is the uh, the probably the more interesting part of the whole thing. Is getting to that stage involves you have to submit an application. We'll be taking applications till probably mid-June, uh, but the earlier you get it in, the better, because we provide services before that and help you. But you submit an application. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can continually mold it until we actually do the next stage, which the next stage is we send it to a selection team. And we use a group of entrepreneurs that you know each of us have kind of met throughout our travels, and we try to pick entrepreneurs who have no connection to Madison County, have no connection to our region. A lot That's of them have never idea. been to Indiana, um, we have we had five people or four people on the last one who had never been to Indiana, um, and out of the people that had been to Indiana, a lot of them had not really spent any time in Anderson, so they they're, they're very unbiased. unbiased. Yes, you know they don't know. <laughs> like the, the one of the things I told a lot of people that were applying to pitch is that they don't know anything sad and they don't know anything happy about Anderson. All they know is what you're presenting to them, and whatever you present to them is what they're going to select. So you know, telling the story of like. 
like what Anderson was or what it could be or whatever else. That's not it. Your story is what's important. Tell what you want to do and why you're going to do it. And those people who were selected, I mean, we had amazing people. I had a, a person I call her DD. Her name is Ying Jing. Ying Jing is she's been a part of some of the largest Kickstarters of all time. And wow, I mean, millions and millions of dollars, and have been involved with some of the companies that are doing really amazing stuff. And we had a Grammy uh, award-winning uh, lighting and stage production person on, on the selection team. Um, we had a, a guy who worked with uh, and has been a co-founder with uh, um, with Scott Jones, the guy who basically owns Press One to talk to an operator, you know, that owns sure. that system. Um, and he's a young guy. He's in his 20s, Nick Birch. And he was there at the event as well. You know, he came into town and showed up and said, what do you want me to do? You want me to move stuff? It's like, no, no, you're a VIP. <laughs> you just sit back and relax. Um, and Mike Seidley, who has, like, uh, got a great venture uh, uh, as a spinoff of of an ideal that they originally created that became monster.com and sold off. So you've got these really amazing entrepreneurs that were happy to join this and help through this process. And they gave great feedback as well, but they ultimately just picked what are the top six they liked and they didn't rank them. How one many to did six. you get in? How many we had proposals? 32 applications. Wow. So that were finished. They were had enough information that's where I could find that that's find that's a way to contact that person, and to be honest with you, they're, they're, uh, the 32 was well well within reasonable. We that was very that was it was very and that's rewarding all to see from that. our Anderson community. That's that was from only the Anderson well. You had to be for the first pitch night. You had to benefit or operate Madison County directly. Okay. So it's only from this community. Well, I didn't see any that were unconnected from the community. What I did see was out of the 32. About 20 of them were actually responsive to phone calls and text, right? Okay. And then out of those, uh, there was a, we got down to about a little over 12 people, uh, 12 different organizations that had a flushed out plan and were really ready. Mm-hmm. A lot of people weren't ready, really mm-hmm. ready yet. But they still went through the process and still went to the pre-pitch night stuff to kind of really figure out what they should be doing. Because this, even though you know you're pitching in front of possibly you know 200 people, this process of getting your story down and right. getting how you can describe yourself in you know minutes is just amazingly rewarding and it is the thing that you have to be able to do and i think probably gut-wrenching at the same time there's a vulnerability (laughs) with that oh yeah that you are presenting your your passion out on a plate in front of in front of a lot of people and then are waiting for their feedback I mean, I don't think there's a person that wasn't nervous, you know, sure. and, and every one of us, you know, me just starting with, are we going to be able to actually get people to come here? Is this going to be something right. that, that gets people's attention? And then all the way through the night, just how, uh, I mean, it was amazingly emotional just to see that amount of people, you know, the fruits mm-hmm. of all the labor of all of these people that right. came together to, to put on this event. And none of us know what we're doing. You know, none of us, <laughs> none of us yes. know exactly how to really do this stuff. You know, we're not event planners. We're not, we're not people that are production teams or whatever. But the night went really seamlessly. It went really well, and we'd like to kind of keep that same type of momentum going. You know, hopefully we do do some stuff that's a little weird and we cause a little bit of confusion because it's also part of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Right. You know, being an part entrepreneur. Part of that growth. Part, Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. but being an entrepreneur is basically managing paranoia. And but, you know, just like when, when you and I have first met, I, I, I'm a very positive person. Lindsay's a very positive <laughs> person. There's something crazy about it. There's something off that allows us to take paranoia and bad news and go, there's an opportunity there. You know, there's something we can do. Isn't our community <laughs> lucky to have you? It's the right place for a lot of people. There's. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I hear that over and over again. Again, right here on this stage of people saying, why wouldn't you try this in Anderson? Because people in Anderson are very gracious and they allow you to mess up when you first open and and they keep coming back and uh, many restaurants that have said hey we had a really rough first couple weeks but people did not give up on us and they came back and and so Anderson is a a place of of folks who are gracious it's one of the things that I love about Anderson that I think we forget sometimes the value of our city is in our people and that's one of the things that 
you know, it surprises me every time I came back to visit and I was like, I could raise my kids here. Like, this is the kind of city that you want to have your kids grow up in. And I think that, you know, for me coming from a larger city, it was really hard initially because I wasn't connected to anyone. And that's been one of the great things about, you know, working and volunteering for pitch night is that I've got to meet so many wonderful people that I had no idea in my wildest dreams would be living in Anderson, Indiana. And I think we all kind of feel that way about each other. And it's like, what a great place where all these people are coming together and we just need to find that central communication point so that we can tie everyone into the community because I know there's a lot of people out there that feel lost and doing things like pitch night is a great way to connect people. So yeah. like you know, the volunteers that were that were a part of this, you know, and Lindsay's like a prime example of that is someone who was in New York City uh, and working with amazing organizations and at various different roles, various different tasks and has great experience and she brought that back during the pitch night with helping with public relations and helping with those media outreach pieces that were just amazingly phenomenally helpful and you know, right. it's just amazing that Lindsay's back in town. It's you know Lindsay's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, honestly, it was such a such an honor to be able to work with such a great group of people, um, and that's one of the things that with pitch night with everyone coming together, it really kind of helped me feel a part of the community. Um, you know, I grew up here. Um, left right after high school, just like Shane. And then we were trying to figure out where we were going to move outside the city to raise the family. And it just called us back. Family always calls you home. And I think right. that a lot of people in our age bracket um, are moving back to Anderson. And there's a lot of people who are looking for places to raise their family. Uh, but my mom has been a part of the community for a long time, a community activist um, out during the Kilbuck landfill time. Right. <laughs> so way back, um, you know, and it's always been something for me that wherever you're at, you want to be a part of that community and make it better. And I think that's something that a lot of people crave, but they're not sure how to get involved. Um, and running into Shane was just, you know, coincidence, just like Vesuvius, um, just a collusion of, of people and ideas and bringing that together at pitch night and other events that I'm sure will be coming throughout the community is such a great way to get involved and a great way for Anderson to get behind and support people and getting them involved. I think that's those ties that bind us together are the things that make us a stronger community. Getting involved with Vesuvius has helped me flex some muscles that I haven't really used since I lived in a larger city. And I think that that shows me that there's such potential in Anderson um, for all of those businesses that you think may or may not work. This is a great place to try them um, because you have people around now. I know now that are supporting me and also things that are needed. You know, public relations are needed here. Right. Communication strategies are needed. All the types of things that you don't necessarily think of in a small town atmosphere. Um, they're here because we have entrepreneurs here. And that's that's such a great thing. I often ask people this question. Uh, but I'm curious to see, having been away in mm -hmm. New York, of all places, and then coming back, what are your favorite things about Anderson? Um, my first favorite thing, and it's not just about Anderson, is that I can open the back door and walk out and send my kids outside. You know, it, it has that feeling of community where I'm not constantly worried that something bad's going to happen. The safety. and The safety aspect of it. The other part of it is um, walking into the grocery store and seeing somebody you know. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on... <laughs> know what you look like um, but my husband my husband is always surprised everywhere I go I see someone I know whether it's someone I haven't seen in 30 years or someone I just met it's um, it's a community that we all go to the same places and we all see each other and know each other and I love that like I love being able to walk mm -hmm. out the door and see people I know and in a larger city you know it can be the loneliest place in the world. And I think about that a lot. You know, I want my kids to, you know, be able to see their teachers in 20 years. And whether right. it's just to visit me or not, I would love for this to be a place that they want to live and the place they want to stay. And that's another reason that I'm so invested in, you know, helping Anderson become its its next iteration of itself. You know, whatever comes next, it'll be great because it is what we make it. It, it was wonderful growing up here, and I know that it's going to look different right. for my kids growing up here, but it's still going to be wonderful. I know change feels really hard for people and Anderson's kind of in that jumping off point where things are going to change a little bit and our makeup of what our brings in our economy is going to change and that's part of the times and I think that can feel really hard when you've lived here for a long time and you've you loved it the way it was um, and so it's just going into we're going to love it the way it is now and the way it is in the future too.
Yes, and I think it's also in larger areas, like even in Indianapolis, it's harder to get involved in things right. because there are already so many people doing it. And here there's absolutely a need for people to get involved. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so easy. And that what is what makes it such a special community is that, you know, everybody can get involved here if they want. Right. You know, and there's it's always a choice, but there's space for everyone here. And that's what I love about it, too. Just to go back to Fit to Fly, if people want to check into that, how can they contact them? What's the best way to, to follow up on that? Um, they have a great Facebook page. Okay. I like their Facebook page because I see every day what they're doing. I'm like, oh, oh, they're here today. Oh, they're, they're taking pictures today. Oh, they're open. So following their Facebook page is a great way to do that because they give constant updates of where they're at and what they're doing and kind of gives you a taste of what's to come. And I do have to tell you that I have been stalking their Facebook page Me too. because I'm so <laughs> excited about this. This is just going to be such a fun form of exercise. And they do. They're very good at, at posting daily updates. So you kind of see right where they are. And just the momentum is growing before they're even open. There's another couple businesses in Anderson that are doing that, that are really using social media before they even open their doors to whet your appetite. I mean, people are ready to go. Can't wait to get into that restaurant or, or whatever it is. People are ready to go because they do a great job with their social media. So that certainly uh, is, is an important piece uh, and I think that you do some educating as well um, yeah. on that kind of front. So can you talk a little bit about that? So for the pitch, for the pitch night specifically, we had support nights leading up to it, which was we showed what does a 20 by 20 presentation look like. Mm -hmm. And then we also went through and had each person kind of tell a little bit of their story in a very in, informal cooperative, happy place for everyone, you know, not with a big audience. So we gave everybody an opportunity to kind of figure out who they are and what they're, what they're really doing as an introduction to each other. And, and then we also provide continual support around that application. I'm spending probably about three or four hours out of each day throughout the week contacting people who have applied or people who are past applications and saying, how are you doing? You know, have mm -hmm. you thought about, you know, maybe looking at how you could like use this phraseology and describing what you're doing? Um, and just looking at things differently and as well as taking those applications and when I see one that's interesting is taking them to other individuals and saying how would you describe this after you read this or after if I explain this to you what would you would be your impression of what this is and its level of possible success um, and a, a lot of those conversations get to happen because one of the things that really can kill an entrepreneurial community very quickly is an ideal that you should not talk about something that's cool. Like if you're doing something good, you should be afraid of people stealing it. That ideal right. and that mental mentality will destroy businesses. And that's, I mean, there is a lot of people here that want to do cool things and they've talked about them for 20, 30 years and they haven't done them. And they've been waiting for those people that they feel confident to talk with. And that may not be the right person that could actually say, let's do this. To you know, put feet to their ideas yeah, and yeah, dreams. Exactly, exactly. Like one of the things you need to do to really flush out an ideal is you, know, you need to communicate with people and you need to put it out there and you need to let people know what it is that you're thinking. You know, it doesn't have to be what is that patent that you're going for, right. but it could be, you know, kind of an experience or something that you're trying to solve. Like, is this a problem for you that this occurs? Have those conversations with as many people and as often as you can. And when someone really shows interest in it, take them on as a team member. Figure out a way so you guys can both work on it together. Figure out ways to, to, to build a community around what it is that you're working on so that when you do get to the phase where you're ready to launch, you have a really good idea of what it is and you don't open a business and then have no one showing up. Right. You know, so the engagement is most of the battle, the buy-in. And that's what I like, too, when you were talking about the actual pitch night, is you are intentionally building buy-in. So when that, whatever that, that entrepreneurial idea was, when it launches, you've already got a build-in an yeah. audience that's thrilled for you. Yeah, it's the no excuse clause, right? The clause that we have in there. The no excuse. You can't say the community did not support you. If you win the yes. pitch night, you, that, that excuse has been completely removed from you. And even the people who were in second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down to sixth place, right. they continue to get a massive amount of people that are, are, are aware of them. You know, it's that, you know, if you tell two friends type thing, you know, it's, it's not that 
uh, exponential, but it, as it continues to grow, like people like D Parson with uh, uh, Super D and the pen and ink that he's working on, he's getting amazing traction. And he's uh, Garfield's 40th anniversary book. He's got a slide in there. He's got a, a little strip in that book. Uh, That's Jim Davis. incredible. And this is a kid who just works out of a building right here in downtown. And he's, he's amazing. Uh, and other, you know, Pete Batar is like a, an international guy. I mean, he's been selling product all over the world. And, you know, he's, he's, he's around and he's still, you know, getting ready to do the next big thing. And it's, it's quite interesting. I wish I could tell you about it. Uh, I'm sure he wishes yeah, that he was, could <laughs> tell you today, too. <laughs> but, uh, and he's got things that are just amazing going on. And, and Cindy, Dustin Quirk, uh, with, like, uh, uh, you know, one of the big problems in the States right now is Asian carp. And she is right. one of the few people that has developed a dog tree where she's she's helping to slaughter a lot of those Asian carp so that they don't go into the Great Lakes and destroy our Great Lakes. She is one of the people that are using those things. And she's got a very successful business that's, you know, a lot yes. of people don't know is here. Right. Absolutely. I mean, she is such a sharp lady. She's amazing. Laura Walker-Turvey, another person from Anderson who has a really great ideal. She takes something that a business owner loves and turns it into something everyone else can love on another level. She takes uh, a craft brews from around the state and she turns them into pub cakes, right? So she takes really? these, she makes these cupcakes using the brew, using like uh, the actual beer and making these cupcakes with the icing and everything else. And she tailors all the flavors toward that beer. That so is she makes so these neat. really interesting little, little pub cakes that are just delicious. And they're safe for everyone. Yeah. So like everyone, everyone can take part in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lisa Singleton with, uh, with her, with the tiny houses and she's moving into her own tiny homes and her amazing story. You know, um, I hope I'm not missing anybody. I think that's all of them. But they, they were just a great group of people that, that got up on stage. And even the people that applied were amazing people. And I hope that they're all part of the next one and that they try again. Right. Um, if you've applied before and you've been on stage, we're not letting you on this time. But the other thing that's really, we're making this one a little bit more competitive because we're allowing Delaware and Henry County to also oh, contribute okay. to this. So okay. we're entrepreneurs. Borders are there for other people. You know, we see those borders and we say, hey, there's a regional thing that we could really do here. And so let's, let's do that. There's already amazing things going on in Muncie. There's already uh, uh, this like shift going on in Henry County. Their downtown is getting really interesting in Newcastle. Um, and we thought, well, let's just bring all these kind of communities together and you know, we'll do it here. And then maybe the next time we'll do it in one of their communities as well. Sure, yeah. And draw everybody in. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and just updating us on, on what's happening on Main Street, where you are, um, and filling in the blanks for us on the, the pitch nights. Um, if somebody wants to be involved in that, how can they best reach you? And if somebody just wants to sit down and pick your brain for a little while, yeah. how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm amazingly available, as well as I think all of us kind of are, you know, even with the other tasks and other things that we have going on in our lives. So a, a good conduit of everything is we do have the Facebook pages, we have all these other things, mm -hmm. but the Vesuvius website is just vesuvius.in. And I'm hoping it will be somewhere that you guys will be able yeah. to. Oh, say. yeah, it'll be a lower third <laughs> right yeah. there. Yeah. So we'll say down here <laughs> or there <laughs> somewhere. Uh, they, you know, uh, the Vesuvius website is a great little place where we kind of put the most current thing right up front. So right now it's the pitch night. And that's also where you can go to to fill out an application if you did want to start using the Vesuvius co-working space. Um, and we're, we're curating that. We've got a few folks using that now. We want more and more people that want to help others do businesses as well as just do their own task outside of their home. Right. We want to be that spot for them. Uh, and so that's a great place to kind of begin that communication. And uh, there's, there's, I'm very easy to find on social media and everything else. And I have no problem with, you know, a thousand people I want to reach out. I would love it. It'd be great. 
Yeah, and, and you do respond immediately, which is great because yeah. I've messaged you myself and said, hey, blue, 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 and then there you are. So, yeah. and Lindsay as well. Thank you for, for being here and for always being available. And thank you for your hard work for our community. And we're, we're very grateful. So thank you, Anderson, for joining us today and participating in this conversation. And as always, thank you for being such a gracious community and supporting local business. Have a great day.